So we have concluded chapter five, which was on matrices, and we're beginning chapter six, which is called arrays. These are three of the fundamental data structures in R, namely vectors, matrices, and arrays. It turns out an array is a generalization of a matrix, and we'll see how that works going forward. But if you want to think of some analogies here, a scalar was what we referred to as a simple object. You can think of it as having zero dimensions. You just type in the name of the scalar and you'll get it. If you want a geometric um, analogy for that, you can think of that as a point. A vector, on the other hand, has one dimension. So when we reference or try to uh, extract elements from a vector, we have to put one number in there as a subscript. If you want a geometric analogy to a vector, it would be a line. In the last chapter, we hit a matrix, and a matrix has two dimensions. So anytime you want to extract a single element of a matrix, you have to put in the row and the column to get in. And you can think of it as a plane. Well, the next thing up the food chain here is going to be an array. An array can have any number of dimensions. It could have three dimensions, four dimensions, five dimensions, etc. You can think of it, if you know linear algebra, as a hyperplane. Now, incidentally, the matrix work that we did in the previous section was just to set up matrices. It was not to do linear algebra. Linear algebra is a later chapter in the uh, course. And when we get to linear algebra, we'll be doing things like eigenvalues, eigenvectors, determinants, decompositions, etc. But we will put that off for a while. So this is topic six, um, arrays. The way you define an array is with the following syntax. The array function does it. The first argument are the elements that are going to go into the array. The default that for them will be NA, which is for not available, missing data. Then what you have is the dimensions of the array. So you put in however many dimensions you have will go into a vector there. And then finally, dim names will, if you would like, put names or metadata out there on the rows and the columns of the uh, array. But you will have more dimensions still for an array. Here's a quick example. If we say array, and we say that this is going to have elements which are all zeros. And the dimensions on this ray, array will be uh, three rows, seven columns. And I don't know exactly what to call the two there. You can think of it as layers. You can think of a bunch of three by seven matrices, one behind another. And the zero will get recycled. So we know there will be a total of 3 times 7 times 2, and 3 times 7 is 21, and 21 times 2 is 42. So there are going to be 42 elements in this array, and they'll all be zeros because that zero gets recycled. And here's what that looks like. So here is one 3 by 7 matrix. And notice out front, it says that the third subscript on all of those, which is this subscript out here, is a 1. And then here is the second 3 by 7 matrix. And this time, you see that 2 is that third subscript. And all of them are zeros. So that's a quick example of setting up a three-dimensional data structure. Let's actually set one now to a variable, and we'll call that variable A for array. And let's say we want to set the uh, vector 1 through 12, and we want to have two rows, three columns, and two, I'll call them layers, to the array A. It will get set silently here. And you can see up here, we can see now there's an object named A. And you can see that it has three dimensions to it. So if we want to extract a particular value, we've got to put in all three of those. And let's take a quick peek and see what A looks like. There it is. Here is the first 2 by 3 matrix. And here is the second 
two by three matrix. Notice the way that the, uh, the one through 12 went in. They went in column wise by default. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six for that first layer, then seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 for that second layer. You extract values from the matrix A in the usual fashion. So if I say A and I want one, two, two, let's see if we can figure out what element that is. It says first row, so that says we're either going to be coming from this row right here or this row right here. It says second column, so we now know it's either going to be this value here or this value here. And finally, the second layer to that array, so we know that this will return the nine and I think I had one, two, two. I've got to go out to the end here to get that to execute. And it did, in fact, go grab the nine. Let's see if you can guess what this will give us. Let's go everything, all rows, all columns, and then we want the first layer. What that will do is that will strip off this first layer, the one, two, three, four, five, six, and it will actually return a matrix like it does in that fashion. Try one more example of indexing. Let's say we want A sub 1. That'll be first row. And let's say we want negative 2. That says eliminate the second column. And now let's say we want three. Now you've got to think through what this is. The one here says we want the first row. Oh, we can't get the third layer. That was a mistake. There's only two layers, so we'll get the second layer. So we're looking at the second layer, which is right here. Furthermore, we're looking at the first row within the second layer. And what does this negative two here in the middle say? It says eliminate column two, so we're left with seven and 11. And once again, if you do this right, you will wind up with seven, 11. So when you index in this way, you can either index going after a single element, or you can go after a matrix, or in this case, you can even return a vector. So there are a lot of possibilities. So that's it for these three big data structures, vectors, matrices, and arrays. And we're going to stop working with uh, data structures right now and go to functions for the next section.